Hello and welcome back to the Guns and Outdoors channel. Hope you're doing well today. Please like and subscribe as we have a great video lined up for you today. It's for the new shooter. There's a lot of new shooters in 2020 and they're continuing to be a lot more into 2021. It has to do with a lot of people being worried about what's going on in the world, wanting to feel empowered, bring back the safety, imply a little bit of control and get out there and get their first firearms ownership. It's a very difficult time to jump in, but we're very happy and thankful that you are. You're doing the right thing. So today on the upcoming videos, we're going to go through firearms, the different types, things to consider, hearing protection, eye protection, training ammunition, self-defense ammunition. We're going to go through mindset tactics, and we're going to big emphasis on training and a little bit more. So sit back, relax, stand by. And we'll be right back, and we're going to go right to it. Welcome. We're happy to have you. Welcome to the Shooters community. Perhaps you just completed your first purchase or you applied for your pistol permit or you have one that you're looking at and you haven't quite pulled the trigger on it. Maybe you've nailed it down. Hopefully this video can help you. For those that are just starting and you're doing your research, it's going to help you as well. And anybody that's experienced, you guys are already familiar with the topics. So feel free to pop in some positive, constructive thoughts in case I miss anything in today's video. But up first is pistol types. We All my guns are unloaded. I've got the mags dropped, verified empty. So here you go. I'm going to drop it to give it the full effect. This is a subcompact pistol. You can kind of see how that is. That's a SIG P365. So we're thinking small, medium, and large. So here's our subcompact. This is going to be a Glock 19. In comparison, you can see the size difference. Glock 19, very common, one of the world's leading midsize or compact guns. You could associate it with midsize. This is a P10F. This is a full size. We'll compare that to the Glock 19. This one does have a light on it. And we'll just bring back in the SIG. You can kind of see the difference. Everybody likes a real small gun. A lot of women, a lot of guys, you, maybe you're a little timid, you think small, but it's the complete opposite from what we find out. These guys are a lot of times are real snappy to shoot. They're very good. There's pluses and minuses. You can conceal them really well, but they're going to kick. And some people are uncomfortable with that. Most new shooters are. So as much as you're getting the concealment aspects of it, you're it's less of a joy to shoot or... You're not doing precision long range shooting, depending on what you're going to evolve into. There isn't ever one gun to rule them all. I remember back in the day, I got my first Glock Gen 2, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson G23. I thought, hey, I'm just going to spend $500. This is it. It's a lot of money. I'm going to get into it. Reality is, it's like any other type of hobby, lifestyle. It's a commitment. Uh, uh, enjoying a sport you buy other aspects. There's different types of gear, mindset, tactics, equipment that you that drive you to go down certain paths. So just putting and letting you know right now, you won't only buy this first gun. So I hate to break it to you, but uh, you heard it here first in case you didn't already know that. All right. Um, I do have a little cheat sheet up behind us. So if you see me looking up occasionally to get my bearings because I'm not a robotic cyborg, then that's that's what that's all about. Reputable company. You want to get a gun that, ask around, talk to your local gun store, do your research online. You want to go to a reputable company. Most companies these days that make firearms, they're going to have a good working product. There are some in certain countries or uh, that, that are a little less reliable because they have a little less quality assurance. That's what it comes down to. Also, you can have the best gun in the world, a Glock, a SIG, a, a CZ, a, a um, different things like that, and you'll find out that you'll have a bad one. You'll have a, a lemon, something in the machining process. Uh, they're tools, so you're always going to have a bad one. But generally, the manufacturers are pretty good. They will work with you. You can send it right back in, take it right back to your dealer. They'll replace it for you. So don't sweat it. Uh, one of the things I like to try to say is rent, try, and purchase. Before you make that first purchase, 
go to your local gun store, go to the rental wall, grab any gun off that wall. For example, at my local range, if you're shooting nine millimeter, they'll allow you one gun at a time for that range day, for that range duration that you're out there. You can shoot a particular manufacturer's pistol, go back in, swap it out and say, hey, I'd like to try the Smith & Wesson. I'd like to try the SIG. I'd like to try the, the Glock. And you can bring it back out, shoot it. And what you're doing is you're looking for grip, feel, sight alignment, and trigger finger. Does it fit good in your hand? Also, another thing is I've had guns that felt really good in my hand that I didn't shoot well. It's kind of weird. It's just how it is. I've also had guns that I literally could not stand the fill and I keyholed uh, at 21, 30 feet. So I shot it so good, but I hated the feeling. I don't know. That's just how it is. So most people are going to say, go with what feels good to you. And I think as a new shooter, that's generally where you want to be. But just remember what I said. It's not always the case. All right, up next. So you're trying them out. Then you get ready to make your purchase. You get it down to your final two. Then have at it. You got your pistol purchase permit. And go ahead and make that purchase. Try to find the best deal. One of the things I would tell you guys is don't penny pinch. When we're new shooters, what's the difference between these days, $600 and $645? In the grand scheme of things, not much. Because when you're purchasing that pistol, you really spend a lot more on other things, accessories and trainings and ammo, especially today in the year 2021. Uh, a lot of other things are more expensive than the actual firearm itself. So just kind of let that sink into your memory banks and don't sweat the price. And if you have a budget, stick within your budget, make payments, put it on layaway or save up, you know, a little bit each payday until you're ready and then go make your purchase. But if you can't afford it, then don't do it. But generally folks that are in the firearms industry, we divert the money because of the importance and the responsibility and what it, you, it brings for you. Anyway, it's your budget. You know how to manage your own money. So that's on you. Ammunition types. We've got two different ammunition types. We've got training ammo, which is full metal jacket. This is just an example. We've got some federal. These days, get whatever you can get. Uh, any brand is perfectly fine. My advice to you is just get your full metal jacket, standard training ammo. So federal, blazer. I've shot quite a lot of the Magtech as well. Beggars can't be choosy in today's market. Now we're gonna to move to self-defense ammo. There's a lot of specialty boutique ammunition. Let's just stay away from that for right now. What I want you as the new shooter, I wanna just put you into hollow points. So some examples might be this SIG 365 hollow point ammunition. This is a good one, Spear Gold Dot. You're gonna see a little bit about that. Another brand, if you can find it perhaps to consider is Federal Hydroshock. Very good, and it's as the name implies. Most people for their personal defense are gonna go with a hollow point. For you guys, I don't care what brand at this point, say you've you got your nightstand gun, you're ready to keep it loaded, keep it in safe condition, uh, or even carry if you have your CCW permit. Uh, I want you just to have hollow point, you, you should be good to go. Theoretically, if you can't afford it, you can't find it, you can go with full metal jacket, it is what it is. So have your training ammo, FMJ, and then have your personal defense in hollow points. Okay, so what's in the box? When you get your new pistol, you're gonna get your owner's manual. It's gonna come with a very basic manufacturer provided auto loader or, or loader. Generally, there's gonna be two to three magazines uh, with the pistol. It's, they're all going to come in a case, and then you're going to get a little safety lock. As the adult in the house, it goes without saying, safety is paramount. We don't want anybody to get hurt, and we want this weapon to be ready and available should you have one of the worst days of your life. Hearing protection. You're going to want to get your hearing pro, your hearing protection. Now, we've got two types. We've got your standard budget type foam. This is a, just a pair of 3Ms. I use these to mobile on. A little peace and solitude. For me, when I'm doing my training, I actually like this electronic hearing protection. Now, these are made by Howard Lights. They are very affordable. You can buy them on Amazon and other places like that, sub $50. So generally, you're in the $20 and below and 50 or more super fancy versions, 100 up. 
And when you get into training, I do recommend this to protect your hearing so it's got computerized circuitry. And then you're also able to amplify. Hunters use these, but these are really good. If you spend the money in your very first training class, which is what we're gonna talk about later, I want you to have a pair of amplified ear pro. Eye protection, everybody's different. You can wear your prescription glasses. Generally, they're gonna say an impact resistant type. This is another Howard Lights. There's different colors, there's different styles. Just go with whatever you're comfortable with. Holsters, I'm gonna be real simple with it because I can go a long time. There's inside the waistband, there's outside the waistband, there's appendix, AIWB, there's pocket carry, there's cross draw, there's chest rigs. So there's all these options with all these flavors. I'm gonna splash in some footage. Take a look at all these options. There's budget level manufacturers, there's higher end stuff. Bottom line is ask around, try to get the, a good one. What I want you to, guys to do is I want you to get an outside the waistband Kydex. You see it has belt clips. So you're gonna have a nice sturdy belt. This particular one is good. It's basically Kydex holster. So when you're doing training, you're, you're not pulling up your shirt, you're kind of moving the gun to your side, you're, you're gonna practice drawing and reholstering. So this is the benefit, this is your training rig. So get yourself an outside the waistband OWB. All right, and do not get this. This was my very first holster I ever had. I had no idea, I just found it. Remember going to a two day class, you go to reholster and these things are gonna bend, something's gonna get caught up in your trigger and you're gonna have a, a safety issue. So we're not having this type of holster, a hip holster when we're training. We're staying away from these, all right? We're not doing this. Don't do it, Kydex. I'm serious. All right, so we got our pistol, we're ready to roll. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do either a basic pistol class or I want you to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with an instructor so he can give you personalized time for about an hour. Generally, you get an hour session, doesn't break the bank, and you get a lot of individualized attention. Okay, another thing you can do is you can sign up for that pistol class. Now, they're gonna have different names. It's gonna be like a pistol fundamentals, basic pistol class, it's gonna be a one day versus a two day. It might even be a half day. So what you're gonna see is they're gonna teach you all about a pistol. They're gonna teach you about these type of pistols. They're gonna cover wheel guns, which is revolvers. You're gonna get a little basic instruction at that NRA level of a lot of different types. You're gonna learn your trigger. You're gonna learn what the pieces and the components are, the slide, the frame, the grip. It may even cover the safeties. It's gonna vary by your instructor and what curriculum he's teaching. So look around, every instructor is gonna teach something different. So we've got the gun, we've got the components. How much ammo should you need? Everybody's gonna vary. I'm recommending 200 to 500 rounds. Whatever you can find on the full metal jacket, go ahead and get yourself two to 500. Some guys shoot this up in a weekend. These days, not so much, unless you have a huge surplus and it's very expensive. Okay, we're gonna do this in phases, and then perhaps on your next payday, you're gonna buy more magazines and more ammo. What's commonly not talked about is the maintenance side at this point. Maintenance should be fun, it should be really cool. You can get into it. It shouldn't be cumbersome, laborsome, oh, icky, I gotta clean it. That's part of the fun part, sit back, relax, enjoy. Clean your firearm, make everything safe, get the ammo out of the room, pull out all your kit and your swabs and your cleaning materials and go to work. For me, one of the things I wanna do before we do that is I wanna tell you to read your owner's manual. It is the last thing that most guys and people don't read. I don't know why, but it is, because I think we assume that we don't wanna read the manual, that we already know everything. It's an ego thing. But I'm gonna tell you guys, different guns. When we go to, to take a slide off the weapon, sometimes you have to lock it back and then engage to get the slide off Sometimes you have to pull it back just a half an inch. Other times you pull straight down and you pull a slide forward like on Canix and then up. It, it is gonna vary. And if you get stuck, read your owner's manual, you know? Also, they're gonna have tips about break-in, um, maintenance schedules, replacing springs. You get into higher round counts at 2,000 rounds, 5,000 rounds, 10,000 rounds. If you get that much, 
there's recommended schedules, just like your vehicle, to replace certain parts. Like we're gonna train a lot, we're gonna enjoy the ride, we're gonna learn as much as you can, and we're gonna be humble. And that's the thing. We wanna to strive to master the fundamentals. All right, folks, we're in the home stretch now. Here's the ask. Become an ambassador to the sport. Ambassador to the gun community, to the shooting community. Embrace your brothers, learn a lot, take a lot of training, learn how to protect yourself and your others and your family, do the right thing. Be God-fearing, become an evangelist for us, help new shooters, spread the word, help us protect the Second Amendment. There's a lot of politics going on, there's a lot of things in the world. Look, the Constitution's a great thing. We all have a copy, it's a beautiful document. You don't have to have served your country in order to recognize it. We're in the best country in the world for a reason. Doesn't matter if you got off the boat yesterday, legally, or your ancestor came over 10 generations ago. You, we're, all, we're all here. We're all an American. We're U.S. citizens. We have a duty and a responsibility to keep this. We can't let a politician that's worried about a job and a paycheck influence this because they're not going to be around forever. But our rights and the way our country was built we need to be upholding to that and keep the, the founding structure of that. We can't change that to the whim of a community or a nation. The articles and the amendments, including the Second Amendment and all the other amendments, we have an obligation and a duty to uphold. I served my country. I went into harm's way for you guys. Uh, you don't have to have served, but we're, we're all in it together. So we need to keep it that way. As an ambassador, continue your journey. And let me just be the first to say, welcome to the family. You know, in terms of the Second Amendment really fast, if I could just briefly read it. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's very, very powerful. And I'm going to give you two more, all right? Two more. Hang with me. I don't know it's a little political, but check this out. The sacred rights of mankind are not to be rummaged for among old parchments or musty records. They are written with the sum being in the whole volume of human nature by the hand of divinity itself and can never be erased or obscured by mortal power. Alexander Hamilton. Last one, parting thought here. At the conclusion of the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin was asked, we all know him, right? What have you wrought? So what's the outcome of all this, right? How'd we get here? What does this mean to you? And he eloquently said in his answer, a republic, if you can keep it that way. Enough said, drop the mic. Guys, hope you like it. Please like and subscribe to the Guns and Outdoors channel. Let's get 500 likes on this video. Go ahead and share it. Give this to your new friends that are shooting buddies. Put some comments down below, guys. I'm putting a lot of video content out. My ask is hit, hit the like button and give me some positive comments down below. I just went to work for you all, you new shooters. So if you liked it and you got a lot of value out of it, punch the like button and I'll see you out on the range. Take care of yourselves. See ya.